Good day everyone! So we are going to be your reporters in this particular chapter. My name is Flora Megana and I will start the discussion. So in this particular chapter, we're going to talk about training and development of human resources. Now, let me present to you the different contexts of training. For the first one, it is used to ensure readiness for change and maximize competencies of individuals in relation to the needs of the organization. So, it also comes with the determination of an individual kung ano yung pinakamarapat na way para mas maging effective yung transfer of skills. The place of the training function should be at the center of the strategic management process in order that it may facilitate change by translating the values and direction of the organization into a strategic human resource strategy. Guys, again by this time, nare-realize na natin kung bakit bahalo sa lahat ng subject natin at be from okay. Of course, we are supposed to be focused and inclined mostly with finance. Pero kahit sa mga major subjects natin, look, we hear this realization again and again. Kung gaano kahalaga mag-invest sa human resource. Kasi, may aayusin ba yung mga taga-finance department? Gagana ba yung isang capital kung andoon lang siya at walang manpower to operate with the day-to-day -day services? Of course, hindi. Pero kailangan maisiguro na ang mga tao rin sa company ay fully equipped to do their work. For the second definition, the most vital tool of human resource development naturally forms the major part of the present human resource development. So what do we notice here? Effective manager recognizes training as an ongoing, continuous process, not a one-short activity. New problems, new procedures and equipment, new knowledge, and new jobs are constantly creating the need for employee instruction. In short, it is a never-ending process, and the word that should be incorporated is flexible. Hindi ibig sabihin na kung ang type of approach na ina-apply sa training ngayon ay effective, hanggang sa next 10 years or probably 2 or 3 years ay effective pa din siya. So, training and development of employees has become a topic of increased focus for a number of reasons. The first one, distinctive knowledge has been recognized as a key competence in many organizations. Dahil nga ito ay isang process which will practically enable organizations achieve competitive advantage over their rival. The next one, change is endemic in many industries. When we say endemic, it means natural nang mag-occur yung something in particular. And we all know that the only permanent thing in this world is change. In order for us to keep up, lalo na sa business, we should follow the face of the industry, no matter how fast it is, para hindi mapag-iwan. For the last one, companies whose employees are able to solve, understand, and react effectively to problems will enhance the perceived quality of services. Of course, yung epektibong training lamang ang makakamit ng mga damanggit na resulta. If employees are to behave flexibly and effectively, they need to acquire and develop knowledge and skills. If employees are to believe that they are valued by the organization, they need to see visible signs that the company has taken their training needs seriously. Training and development are the process of investing in people so that they are equipped to perform. These processes are part of an overall HRM approach that hopefully will result in people being motivated to perform. So now, what we have here in this slide is a system model of training. So, um, in here, we will be able to distinguish the needs, assessment, development, evaluations. So, for the first one, it is to identify needs for training by conducting needs analysis. So, saan ba tayo po um, uh, in need of analysis sa pinakauna pa lang? So, of course, we have to consider what organization we have the task or job for every employee, and of course, all of the possible behaviors of the personnel you have in the company. So, mapapansin natin na sa baba ng box na ito, sinasabi na we will be able to derive instruction objectives. So, after kasi nating ma-identify yung mga needs ng tatlong nabanggit, of course, we will be able to distinguish kung ano yung mas makabubuti para sa kanila. So, before we go down, dun sa mga nasa baba pa, identify muna natin yung 
or discuss yung nasa right side, which is to identify or the development criteria to evaluate training outcomes. Of course, ano ba naman yung sense ng isang e training kung hindi natin uh, imamonitor yung result or effectiveness ng training na ina-apply natin sa mga employees natin sa isang company. It, of course, is important na malaman natin kung effective ba yung training na ini-imply natin sa company on or before or um, kung nasa gitna naman sila ng pagtatrabaho sa iyo. Hindi lang naman kasi yung gaya na nabanggit ko kanina sa una, hindi lang naman ang nangangailangan ng training ay yung mga baguhan. Kailangan din ng improvement at development ng mga kahit ng mga tenure sa company mo. So, in order to um, resort to the effective evaluation, kailangan natin yung consider yung reaction, yung learning uh, adaptability ng mga employees, another is the behavioral change, and the organization as a whole. So, pag na-distinguish na natin to, we will be able to choose the evaluation design na pwede natin magamit para malaman natin kung effective nga ba yung training na meron tayo sa kasalukuyan. Pagkatapos nating mapag-aralan yung dalawang importanteng factors na yon, of course, we will be able to design a learning environment by examining first the characteristics of adult learners or mas uh, kilala sa tawag na tenures and the learning principles. Pagkatapos naman nito, we will be able to identify or de the development training materials and methods na pwede natin i-apply um, on process habang dinedevelop din natin yung mga employees natin. And then, the conduct of training. Of course, ano ba namang sense ng uh, pag-aaral at pag-observe kung ano yung mga pinaka, kung ano yung the best the training method or approach na i-apply natin sa kanila kung hindi rin natin i-co-conduct. Lastly, we will be able to conduct evaluation and cost effectiveness of training programs. So again and again, as a manager, you have to evaluate if effective ba or may influence ba, may impact ba sa mga employees or sa mga personal na isang company or organization yung training na na-apply mo. Now, let us discuss the further characteristics of training. So, training is a set of activities that provides the opportunity to acquire and improve job-related skills. I think this uh, statement is very self-explanatory. Gaya nga ng mga binigay at shinere nyo, it gives a wider access to expertise, mastery, and practice ng mga certain performances in need in the million lines of work. Training and development combined is important to ensure that people continue to learn skills to help the company be successful. Employee training is a learning experience that seeks a relatively permanent change in employees such that their ability to perform at their current job improves. This may mean changing what employees know, how they work, or their attitudes towards their jobs, co-workers, managers, and the organization. So basically, it will benefit the company or the organization as a whole. Management or leaders are responsible for deciding when employees are in need of training and development and what form it should take. So let us discuss the four types of training. The first one, on-the-job training. O mas alam natin sa tawag na OJT. Lahat naman ata tayo panigurado na rinig na natin to. It is teaching the skills, knowledge, and competencies that are needed for employees to perform a specific job within the workplace and work environment. Pangalawa, apprenticeship. It is a kind of job training that involves following and studying a master of the trade on the job instead of in school. Examples of industries that offer apprenticeships include healthcare, food preparation or serving, manufacturing, and public safety. So, mamaya may elaborate pa natin yan. Pangatlo, job rotation. It is the systematic movement of employees from one job to another within the organization to achieve various human resources objectives such as orienting new employees, training employees, enhancing career development, and preventing job boredom or burnout. So, ito yung pwedeng example dito is yung pagta-transfer sa ibang department. For example, um, yung isang employee naka-assign siya sa uh, department na ganito, let's say finance. 
or uh, sa ibang mga field which is um, nakita ng isang manager na parang applicable naman siya na dito siya dito muna siya sa department na to para maiwasan yung burnout or yung boredom nga minsan kasi pag paulit-ulit na lang yung araw-araw na trabaho ng isang employee Uh, may tendency na tatamha rin siya or mawawalan siya ng determination sa pagtatrabaho sa bawat araw. So lastly, kung meron pa lang on the job, meron ding off. Off the job training refers to an education method where employees learn more about their job or the latest advancements in their field at a location away from their workplace. This type of training essentially helps employees perform their job more efficiently. Habang pinag-aaralan ko yung report, ngayon ko lang din talaga na-realize na meron palang ganito. So, um, example nito is yung mga classroom lectures, audiovisual presentations, case studies, and many more. Basta wala sa work proper. However, before any training takes place, the organization should determine if training is the appropriate intervention. Managers can be alerted to training need by numerous signals. For instance, productivity-related signals like decreases in output and quality or increases in accidents and future elements like jobs that have been redesigned or technological breakthroughs. Most trainings takes place on the job. Such training is convenient and cost-effective, but on-the-job training can disrupt the workplace. And some skills are too complex to learn on the job. In such cases, training should take place outside of the work setting. So, ganun pala yun, no? Meron palang mga critical na mga training na hindi, parang hindi marapat or hindi applicable kung kaagad yung mga uh, employee na subject for training is isasabak kaagad sa workplace. So, mas maganda, uh, mas maganda pala daw sa, uh, based on the observation kung off the job muna sila in the chain before isabak dun sa mismong operations ng business or in ng isang company. Now, let us proceed to the training methods. So, the first one is lecture. It is an efficient means of transmitting large amount of factual information to a relatively large number of people at the same time. So, nabanggit kanina na it is actually a type of off-the-job training. It is a traditional method of teaching and is used in many training programs. A skilled lecturer can organize material and present in a, it in a clear and understandable way. However, a lecture doesn't allow active participation by learners. So, minsan, um, pag one-way lang yung communication kapag hindi... Um, para hindi na-encourage yung feedback from the trainees, medyo mahirap yun kasi hindi natin alam kung na-acquire ba talaga nila yung gusto natin i-impart sa kanila. Second is the case method. Training method in which trainees are expected to study information provided in the case and make decisions based on it. Kagaya ng ginawa natin nung minsan, i-apply at i-represent yung mga nakaraang experiences na pwede makuhanan ng mga lessons na makapag-reflect into improving their performance and understanding. Pwedeng sariling experience ng company, owner, or outside. So basically, yung history or yung isang event ay pag-aaralan, ipepresent sa mga Chinese, tapos they will let them um, analyze what happened in that particular event or um, experience, siguro mga challenges na uh, experience ng isang business, ng isang employee, which eventually will help them um, improve. Ma ma makakakuha sila ng lessons na may apply nila sa sarili. The next one is simulations. So, it refers to creating an artificial learning environment that approximates the actual job conditions as much as possible. So, no, um, after ko mag-senior high, uh, I actually applied sa isang BPO company. So, I had a two-month experience um, being a customer service representative. So, uh, bago nila kami isabak dun sa actual na pagkukos or pag-receive ng calls sa mga customers, meron kaming mga simulation. So, yung mga simulation na yon is um, it provides uh, an example kung paano, paano ba uh, mag-take ng calls, paano yung example mag-respond sa mga clients na tumatawag. So, basically, uh, 
y- uh, yung ex- uh, yung pwede mong matanggap, yung pwede mong ma-anticipate sa actual na pag uh, pagtatrabaho mo or yung gagawin pag isasabak ka na dun sa actual operations, uh, meron ka ng idea. Meron ka ng uh, ina-anticipate kung paano mo siya i-treat pa kapag handa ka na kung anong strategy yung gagamitin mo. The fourth one is apprenticeship, gaya nung nabanggit kanina. So, it refers to the process of having new worker that works alongside and under the direction of skilled technician. So, parang sidekick, ano? So, meron, yung form nito is, meron, ng, uh, meron ka nang ino-observe. Yung mismong nagtatrabaho, yung mismong uh, personal na nandun, uh, pinapayagan, as a form of training, pinapayagan nga observe siya. Pinapayagan kang tulungan niya, maybe utos-utusan para masanay ka kung paano siya mag-work. Next one is internships. Also known as assistantships, typically refer to occupations that acquire a higher level of the formal education than the required by the skilled trades. So, many colleges and universities used to develop agreements with organizations to provide internship opportunities for students. So, para sa atin, dito sa Pilipinas, uh, or I'm, yung, pa, yung impression, pag sinabi mong internship, is pang mayaman lang, ganito, social. So, ngayon pala, meron pala, marami pala mga colleges and universities na nag-offer nito. Madalas, naririnig lang natin to sa career dramas. So, another one is coaching and mentoring. Primarily on the job development, approaches emphasizing learning on one-to-one basis. So, some organizations assign an experience to serve as a mentor for new employees. Effective mentors teach their protégés job skills, provide emotional support and encouragement. Coaching is often considered as a responsibility of the immediate boss who has a greater experience or expertise and is in the position to offer sage advice. The same is true with the mentor, but this person must be located elsewhere in the organization or even in another firm. The relationship may be established formally or it may develop on informal basis. So parang teacher, no? Teacher to student, ganun. Pero in one-to-one basis. So, uh, familiar din to sa mga nagtrabaho sa isang BPO company because uh, every week we have a coaching session. So, in, parang kakausap, uh, it is form of, uh, it is an um, approach of informally din. Kasi kakausapin ka lang, um, hihingin yung experience mo uh, all throughout ganon so doon nila mao observe kung pa- paano ka ba paano ka ba magdevelop kung fast learner ka ba kung uh, kailangan mo pa ng greater improvement so uh, they use a mentor for that next one is discussions it provide forums where individuals are able to learn from one another it is a major use of the group discussions Uh, to change attitude and behavior. So, parang medyo mga confused yung siguro yung mga iba kung ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng discussion sa lectures. So, here, uh, meron actually feedback. Merong uh, interaction mula sa mga um, lecture providers at sa mga listeners. So, it's a form of brainstorming then. So, another one is games. These simulations attempt to duplicate selected parts of a particular situation which are then manipulated by the participants. So, this, uh, some, uh, so uh, makukuha natin example dito is para mga icebreakers, ganon. Role playing, a training method in which participants are required to respond to specific problems they may actually co- encounter in their jobs. Ah. Lahat naman siguro tayo bilang mga estudyante na experience natin mag playing ano. Um, and we are familiar with it. So, I think, uh, alam naman natin kung paano ito mag-work. So, siguro bibigyan sila ng example topic or a certain scenario and uh, titingnan kung ga- paano nila i-resolve yun in a form of role-playing. Another one is computer-based, a teaching method that takes advantage of the speed memory and data manipulation capabilities of the computer so dito naman of course uh, since technology is uh, very influential sa mga undertakings ng mga tao ngayon eh 
ginagamit na rin ito, of course, to help them identify or determine the capabilities ng isang employee. So, uh, meron din to, na-experience ko din to nung uh, nag-apply ako sa uh, BPO industry. So, meron mga certain silang dinevelop na mga platforms or features na pinapasolve, pinapagawa sa mga employees nila as a form of their training. So, in multimedia, it is a training method that uses an application which enhances computer-based learning with audio, animations, graphics, and interactive video. So, parang um, in this approach, may, mayroon silang ipapapanood uh, para sa mga employees to, to analyze and to understand them. For virtual reality, it is a unique computer-based approach that permits trainees to view objects from a perspective otherwise impractical or impossible. Another is video training. It is it uses the it maximizes the usage of videotapes or behavior modeling. It has a long been successful training approach that utilizes videotapes to illustrate effective interpersonal skills and how managers function in various areas. So parang pare-parehas na lang no yung mga anakan ay yung multimedia, yung computer based um, it is under the te technological influence na din. Last but not least, the vestibule training, which is a type of training that takes place away from the production or on the equipment that closely resembles the actual equipment used in the job. So, parang yung kanina, no? Same as off-the-job training. So, that ends my part. Thank you so much for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Rose J. Laxina. I'm going to tackle why transfer of training phase. May mga pagkakataon kasi na hindi lahat na tinitrain sa isang company ay nag-grow. There are a certain instances where trainers cannot perform well even after all the training proper. First, they don't learn material. May mga employees kasi na irresponsible to re-study, review yung mga points na ibinibigay sa kanila. The company will usually expect you to make an effort to self-evaluate. Minsan, tinitest din nila kung papaano ka mag-comply. Hindi lahat nila ibibigay o isusubo sa'yo. Sadly, some people failing assessing that. Second is lack of confidence. Minsan, lalo na kung beginner ka sa isang trabaho, merong intimidation na nararamdaman ang isang empleyado. If he was unable to overcome it, then he cannot perform well. In reality, kapag hindi makapal ang mukha mo magpa-impress, lalo na kung nag-uumpisa ka pa lamang, matatagal lang kang i-improve yung kakayahan mo. Third is, don't understand real-life application. Napansin nyo ba minsan sa klase? Merong mga iba na magaling kapag by the book concept, nakaka-perfect sa exam. Meron naman ako naging kaklase noon ang galing kapag explanation. Nare-relate niya yung mga lesson sa real-life situation. Meron din palang ganun sa trabaho. Minsan, kapag under pressure na, hindi na nila kayang i-apply yung mga strategies at methods na itinuturo. Nahihirapan silang i-incorporate yon kapag sa work setting na. Lastly, is forgetting the material. Dito napapasok yung sinasabi nating stock knowledge and mastery labanan dito. Kailangan, magaling tayong mag-attain ng mga importanting points na ini-impart sa atin ng mga trainees, at managers or minsan ng mga seniors natin. Next is evaluating training. The credibility of training is greatly enhanced when it can be shown that the organization has benefited tangibly from such programs. May consider na iilang approach sa pagdetermine kung worthwhile ba ang mga specific program na ginagamit nila sa kumpanya. Mahalaga na nakikita at napapatunayan na effective at naia-address ang mga kinakailangan at nasusolusyonan ito. Narito ang ilan sa mga factors na tinitignan. First is participants' options. Evaluating a training program by asking the participants' options of its an inexpensive approach that provides an immediate response and suggestion for improvements. Why do we say inexpensive? Simply because, sila na yung subjected na sa mismong ina ng mga training programs na ginagawa. 
sa kanila din magmumula yung feedback na maaaring magamit ng kumpanya. However, hindi ganito gaano ka-accurate dahil based ito sa options rather than facts. Second is extent of learning. Some organizations administer tests to determine what the participants in training program have learned. It is just a must. Na-evaluate talaga ng company kung hanggang saan ang natututunan at nakuha ng kanilang mga employees for their training pace. Otherwise, magiging nonsense lahat ng process na iyon kung hindi rin naman nila pag-aaralan yung resulta. Third is behavioral chain. Tests may indicate fairly accurately What has been learned, but they give little insight into desired behavioral changes. Sa pamagitan ng mabuting pag-observe sa nagiging output ng isang employee, malalaman mo kung may nagbago ba, may nag-improve ba. For example, sa kanyang productivity and attitude. At marirealize mo kung tumalab ba or naging effective ba yung training he underwent. Fourth is accomplishment of training objectives. Still, another approach to evaluating training programs involves determining the extent to which stated objectives had been achieved. Of course, merong mga specific goals na posibleng mamit and this will be the basis kung may na-accomplish ba sa tulong ng training. For example, kung baguhan ng isang employee and after the training phase, he is expected to produce a certain quota. If he was able to reach it or not, will determine kung gaano ka-effective or kung nagbe-benefit ba yung company in investing to development of that particular employee. Next is benchmarking. Benchmarking utilizes exemplary practices of other organization to evaluate and improve training programs. Wala naman masama dito. Lalo na kung ang purpose natin ay mag-benefit din ang mga employee. True, personal growth and not just for the company. Mayroon at mayroon naman talagang magagandang lead, lalo na ang mga successful companies sa industry, na maaari nating i-apply sa sarili nating training programs. Ang advantage nito ay proven na mag-work. The only thing is we have to make sure it suit the company, and we know how to properly execute it. Lastly, A case of simplicity. Value is the measure of impact and positive change elicited by the training. Kagaya ng nabanggit ko kanina, other than the obvious reason to benefit the company for training employees, personal growth is also important. Kapag efficient and productive na ang isang individual contributing to the success of the company and he can make wise decision. That is the most fulfilling and significant result. Kanina, nabanggit natin yung about sa extent of learning. Ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin yung mga most common approaches na ginagamit to determine the effectiveness of training program. First is post-training performance method. In this method, participants' performance is measured after attending a training program to determine if behavioral changes had been made. From the word itself, post, which means pagkatapos, dito na assess ang isang company kung mayroon bang improvement na nangyare pagkatapos ng training phase. Second is pre-post test approach. Most commonly used approach toward measurement of effectiveness of training. Employees' performances were measured prior to training and if required, training is provided. Dito naman, parehas na nagbago at pagkatapos ina-assess ang mga impacts at naatin nila from zero. Kinukumpara ang naging pagbabago at improvement magmula noong umpisa nilang performances. Last is pre-post training performance with control group method. Two groups are established and evaluated on actual job performance. Baka merong nagtataka sa inyo, kagaya ko rin nung una. Bakit parang pareho lang sila nung kanina? Sa aking pagkakaintindi, meron silang bubuuin na tinatawag na control group, which is ia-assess din nila before and after. So ano nga ba ito? Ititest nila ang pagkakaiba ng mga nakakatanggap talaga ng proper training which is yung mga usual talaga na dapat nilang i-train. At itong mga control group naman, pwede sila yung hindi talaga tatanggap ng kahit anong support or pagtuturo. 
Basically, ito yung two group na pag-aaralan. Iko-compare kung may pagkakaiba nga ba ang natuturuan o hinahayaan lang. To proven din na may sense talaga ang process of training. Let us go to the career planning and development. First, let us define what career planning is. Career planning is an ongoing process through which an individual set career goals and identifies the means to achieve them. Also, the process by which individuals plan their life's work is referred to as career planning. Through career planning, a person evaluates his or her own abilities and interests, consider alternative career opportunities, establish career goals, and plans practical development activities. So, sabi nga dun sa documentary na napanood ko, kung i-describe nila si Henry C. Sr., he was unambitious. I think may apply natin ito dito. Regardless if you are an employee, kailangan meron tayong gusto na may achieve in the future. Hindi lang tayo dapat masatisfy kung saan tayo nagumpisa. Lagi natin i-push na magkaroon tayo ng goals para ma-improve. Usually, Career planning programs are expected to achieve one or more of the following objectives. First, more effective development of available talent. The mastery of methods and improvement of a skill is one of the fundamental goals. Second, self-appraisal opportunities for employees considering new or non-traditional career paths. Kapag mas nagiging qualified ang mga employees for promotion, for example, or even outside the company, this is actually a great achievement to impart. Third, more efficient development of human resources within and among division and or geographic location. May mga pagkakataon na because of training, nagiging flexible ang isang individual. So kahit saan man siya may assign, he will always meet expectation and perform well. Fourth, a demonstration of a tangible commitment to EEO and affirmative action. When we say EEO, it is the equal employment of opportunity. Now, this is one of the objective of career planning programs. To provide fair changes by investing to their training experiences. Fifth, satisfaction of employees' personal development needs. Gay nang paulit-ulit kung sinasabi kanina, personal growth of the employee is important. Kailangan may benefit din silang nakukuha other than their basic rights. Six, improvement of performance through on-the-job training experiences. Provided by horizontal and vertical career moves. Seven, increase employee loyalty and motivation, leading to decrease turnover. Minsan may pagkakataon na dahil nagbe-benefit ang employee sa career training programs, na i-inspire sila mag-give back and to provide the best performance. May iwasan ang pagpapasa-pasa sa ibang departments dahil higit sa napapakinabangan siya kung saan siya inilagay and personal preference na din ng employee to stay because he is being valued. And lastly, a method of determining training and development needs. So that ends my part. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Abigail Borja, the third reporter for this group. Individual Career Planning Career planning begins with self-understanding. Intindihin mo muna ang sarili mo bago ka mag-decide kung ano ba talaga ang balak mo. Once na alam mo na kung ano ba talaga ang gusto mo, you can then establish realistic goals and steps to achieve these set goals. The act of learning oneself is called self-assessment and these are some useful tools to help us assess ourselves. First is the strength weakness balance sheet. Dito, sinusulat mo yung mga strengths or yung mga kaya mong gawin at yung mga weaknesses or yung mga hindi mo kayang gawin at ipagko-compare mo lang sila. You can either choose to enhance your strengths more or you can work on your weaknesses. Second is likes and dislikes survey. Ina-assess dito yung mga restrictions sa sinet mo para sa sarili mo. Career assessment on the web. Maraming tests and assessment sites sa internet na available para mag-assist sa mga job seekers. Makakatulong ito para alam mo kung anong company ang nag-hire ng mga qualities at apply mo. 
organizational career planning. Dito ay establish niya ang mga career na nababagay para sa isang employee sa loob ng company nila. Kung mas bagay ba siya sa marketing department, finance department, production department, or etc. This is to help the organization stay organized. Kasi kung ang isang employee na magaling sa finance department ay napunta sa production department, mahihirapan lang employee as well as the other people around him or her because they have to look out for him or her. Career paths Ito yung mga pwede nating itake para umangat sa ating mga respective careers. Usually, upwards lang ang movement dito kasi wala naman sa ating may gustong bumaba. Traditional career path Dito sa traditional career path, magpa-progress ang employee in the organization from one specific job to the next. In network career path naman, vertical pa rin ang pag-arangat ng employee. However, meron ding mga horizontal or iba pa ang opportunities na tinitake. A lateral skill path is when you change your job within the same company. Yung new job mo is still the same level as your previous job and same field pa rin. The only difference is your responsibility and duties na gagawin mo sa new job mo. A dual career path means that a person is thinking about how to prepare oneself for multiple job opportunities after he or she earns their graduate degree. Adding value to retain present job naman, dapat ang employee ay continuous ang pag-add niya ng value sa organization dahil kung hindi, pwede siyang tanggalin sa trabaho ng company niya. Demotion Ito yung nasa taas ka na pero dahil may mali kang nagawa, bumababa ang rank mo sa company. Career Development Career This is the sequence of positions held by a person during his or her lifetime. Career Development This provides for information, assessment, and training. It also helps na maka-attract ng mga talented people and piliing mag-stay ng mga employees nilang maganda ang performance. Boundaryless Career Naman ay careers in which individuals and not organizations define career progression and organizational loyalty. Wala silang specific scope of operations and their job range across several parameters. Framework for formal career planning. First is personal assessment. You are going to perform an assessment on yourself. Second is analysis of opportunities. Isipin mo kung anong mga opportunities ba ang pwede mo itake with the career you are pursuing. Third, selection of career objectives. The career objective that one should choose should be tailored for the job that you are applying for. Fourth, selection and implementation of plan. Mamimili ka na ng plan out of all the plan you have listed down. And iyon ang i-apply mo. And lastly, evaluation of results and revision of plan as necessary. Career Planning and Development Implications The nature of work is changing and continuous learning is required. Because of the constant change na nangyayari, most especially in technology, in the past, wala namang mga computers, printers, PowerPoint presentations, etc. However, sa panahon natin ngayon, meron na. And because of that, kinailangan aralin ng bawat isa kung paano gumamit ng mga computer, printer, and etc. And in the future, dadami pa iyan, kaya continuous lang dapat ang learning. People must take charge of their own careers and build a portfolio of skills by ourselves and not by the hands of other people. Their skills is not your skills. When considering a new job or possible job change, a person should ask and answer two questions. What are my potential gains and losses? What are the potential gains and losses for significant others? Hindi lang dapat sarili mong iniisip mo dito, kundi pati yung mga taong nakapalikid sa'yo. Traditional Career Path Entry and Establishment Nasabi ko na kanina na matpataas ang career mo. So, advancement. The individual seeks growth and increased responsibility. 
individuals may experience continued growth of accomplishments or may encounter career stability. Sa advancement, tuloy-tuloy lang ang paggawat mo sa career mo up until to the point of withdrawal or retirement, kung saan you'll either withdraw because you want to or because of your circumstances or retire because you're already in that age. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am the fourth reporter for today's discussion. I am Mary Rose A. Aquino. Before anything else, I want to share one quotation. Culture is what motivates and retains talented employees. Ano sa palagay ninyo ang nagtutulak sa mga empleyadong umalis sa mga trabaho nila? Hindi ba palagi natin naririnig na umalis na ako kasi ang pangit ng lakaran nila doon? Or hindi naman kaya, ayoko na doon ang baba ng sahod tapos wala pang makukuhang mga benefits. Minsan kasi, ang nagmumotivate lang sa mga employees at pumipigil sa kanila sa pag-alis ay yung mismong culture ng isang organization, mga set of shared values, mga attitudes, and mga practices sa loob ng organization. Kasi, they work for the company so the company needs to return the efforts of their workers by their culture. Meron tayong top 10 job factors for university graduates. Number 1 is enjoying what they do. Minsan kasi, passion na lang din ng mga employee kaya nag apply sila sa isang job lalo kapag nag -e enjoy or mahal nila yung trabaho nila. Another one is opportunity to use skills and abilities. Ang mga university graduates, syempre capable yung mga yan. They have the skills and abilities so ina-apply nila yung mga natutunan nila sa kanilang universities doon sa isang job na siguradong magkakaroon sila ng opportunity para gamitin lahat ng yon. Syempre, kapag graduate ang isang student, unang-una niya hahanapin ay yung job na kung saan magagamit niya yung mga knowledge at capabilities niya for a certain field. Number 3 Opportunity for personal development They apply to develop themselves ika nga. Kapag naghahanap sila ng works, they tend to choose the job where they can develop their personal abilities and strengths and overcome their personal weaknesses. Number 4, feeling what they do matters as simple as the feel nila na yung trabaho nila ay worth it or worth the time. Number 5, Benefits. Sa palagay ko, ito yung pinakamadalas na nababanggit na job factor na kahit sino ay alam ito. Madami sa atin ang practical sa buhay. Hahanap tayo ng mga trabaho na may madaming benefits or mabigat ang benepisyo. Number 6. Recognition for good performance. Simpleng pag-recognize sa mga efforts nila. Kapag maganda yung performance, they can earn incentives or they are recognized for a certain time. Number 7, Friendly Coworker. Madalas, di ba napakasarap mag-apply sa trabaho kapag mahal ka din ng mga kapwa mo empleyado? Hindi yung katulad nung kay Emelda, naaalala nyo ba yun? May sama siya ng loob sa katrabaho niya na parang kasalanan pa ni Lina na napromote siya. Masarap mag-work kapag madali pakisamahan yung mga katrabaho mo. Number 8, Job Location. Minsan kasi pipiliin natin yung mga malalapit sa mga bahay-bahay natin kasi iisipin natin yung mga transportation expenses lalo kapag malayo. Kaya minsan kapag pumipili ng trabaho, tinitignan natin if malayo or malapit lang. Number 9, lots of money or yung mataas na sahod. Practical tayong mga tao lalo pagdating sa pera. Sa pagpili ng trabaho, gusto natin yung malaki ang kita. Number 10, working on teams. As simple as may mga kasama ka or may kadamay ka sa works na gagawin. Two heads is better than one, sabi nga nila. Career development help employees acquire the skills and experience need to perform current and future jobs. When we say career development, kasali dito ang education, experiences, and the modification of behavior, mga techniques para ma-develop ang isang individual, or maging better pa sila at maging valuable. People is an organization resources, kasi kailangan ng mga companies ang presence ng mga employees, lalo na ang mga kanilang total skills and capabilities para mas maging productive ang organization. 
the organization provide career development to help the employees improve their performance para maiwasan din ng job burnout and improve the quality of work lives. And nakikita ng mga organization na ang career development ang pinakasusi para maating ng business ang kanilang goals kasi ang mga tao gumagalaw sa loob ng kumpanya ay ang mga taong magbibigay or magko-contribute din para mas maging competitive pang organization sa business environment. We have Career Planning and Development Methods. First, we have discussion with knowledgeable individuals. In formal discussion, we have superior and subordinate. Pwede silang magtulong para ma-identify kung ano ang the best na gawing activity for the career planning and sa pag-develop nito. In other instances naman, we have psychologist and guidance counselor. And then sa academic setting, we have professor or teachers. Letter B, company material. Firms provide material specifically developed to assist their workers in career planning and development. Kadalasan, nagdi-display yung kumpanya ng mga job descriptions wherein magagamit ng isang tao na may interest na pumasok sa trabaho para maging aware if ever makapasok. E makita nila yung mga possible activities sa job na yun. That company materials will make the person or the aspiring employee determine whether his or her strengths and weaknesses do much doon sa position. In that way, the person will know whether he fits or not in the career. Letter C, Performance Appraisal System Noting and discussing an employee's strength and weaknesses with his or her supervisor can uncover developmental needs. Dito naman, supervisor and the employee will assess the performance of the employee, the strengths and weaknesses para malocate nila ang mga kailangan pang i-develop. Kapag nakita nila na it is much difficult to overcome those weaknesses, then there is the time that they find an alternative. Sa ganyang sitwasyon kasi, maski anong gawin ng isang tao na i-develop ang sarili niya with the help of his or her superior, kapag hindi siya talagang nakalinya doon sa path na yon, ang best solution na lamang is baguhin yung career path into the job kung saan ay talagang fit siya. Letter D. Workshops some organizations conduct workshops lasting two or three days for the purpose of helping workers develop careers within the company. By joining workshops, the employees can develop or practice new skills. Sa mga workshops kasi, madami yung mga activities doon na makakatulong sa mga employees kasi kailangan nilang i-match yung kanilang mga skills dun sa needs ng company. E. Personal Development Plans Workers are encouraged to analyze their strengths and weaknesses. Ina-encourage ng mga employers karamihan na gumawa ang mga employees ng kanilang personal development plans. Personal development plans, ito yung summary ng mga personal development needs na isang tao and yung mga plans or actions na gagawin niya to achieve it. Lahat kasi ng tao ay may kanya-kanya mga pagkukulang. Kaya naman, by assessing yourself as an employee and by doing that, what we call personal development plans, makikita mo kung saan parte ka magfo-focus or anong gagawin mo to develop yourself. Letter F, Software Packages. Some software packages assist employees in navigating their careers. People have their career vision. Marami sa atin ang tumitingin sa internet or sa mga software kung ano ba yung mga pwedeng i-develop na abilities natin para ma-meet yung required skills dun sa career na gusto natin. It can contribute for planning and developing our skills kasi nare-recognize natin if what side of ourselves ang may need na i-improve pa. Letter G, Career Planning Websites. There are numerous websites available that provide career planning as well as career testing and assessment. Dito naman, nasa technological era na tayo. Yung iba sa atin or karamihan sa mga aspiring employees ay nagtatry ng mga test or assessments para matest nila yung sarili nila. Challenges in Career Development Maraming mga nagtatrabaho ang nag-aagree na ang organization ay mag-invest sa career development. Pero hindi kasi nila alam kung ano exactly ang form ang dapat itake ng investment na ito. They presented three challenges in career development. A. Who will be responsible? 
Situations have led companies to encourage their employees to take responsibility for their own development. This may include mergers, acquisitions, downsizing, and employee empowerment. Madami kasing mga organization ang nagsasabi na kailangan daw ng mga employees na maging active doon sa stage pa lang ng planning hanggang sa implementation ng kanilang personal development plan. Bakit sila ine-encourage na gawin ito? It is because dapat tulungan ng mga empleyado ang kanilang sarili para i-develop mismo yung mga dapat i-improve na mga skills and abilities. They should be responsible for their own personal development but they also need general guidance about dun sa mga steps na kanilang gagawin para ma-develop pa lalo yung career nila sa loob at labas ng company. Letter B, How Much Emphasis is Appropriate Too much emphasis on career enhancement can harm an organization's effectiveness. Kapag nag i ang mga organizations sa career development and enhancement, ang mga employees ay mas lalong namumold or nag i yung kanilang mga skills and abilities kaya mas productive sila. Pero tulad sa sinabi dyan, too much emphasis on career enhancement can harm an organization's effectiveness. Kapag ang isang empleyado ay may extreme ng career orientation, hindi na yan tututok sa performance niya. Instead, mas magiging concern na yan sa image niya. Mas maghahangad na yung mga yan ng mga promotions or advancement opportunities and socializing kaysa sa performance niya. Minsan sa mga career development programs, imbis na maganda ang kalabasan, pwede pa itong makaharm sa kumpanya kasi yung iba magkakaroon na ng dissatisfaction. Yung iba naman, hindi na magpe-perform ng mabuti sa job niya and worst, yung iba magre-resign kasi hindi sila satisfied sa nangyayari and nag-expect na sila for advancement. Letter C, How will the needs of diverse workforce be met? Companies needs to break down the barriers some employees face in achieving advancement in order to meet the career development needs of today's diverse workforce. Hindi natin maiiwasan ang mga instances na ganyan sa loob. Minsan nga, nagkakaroon na din ng discrimination. Kailangan ng company na tigna ng mga barriers na kinakaharap ng bawat empleyado. Karamihan sa nakakaranas ng discrimination pagdating sa career development activities ay ang mga babae at yung mga kasali sa minority groups. They are usually excluded from activities tulad ng mentoring and sa pagsali sa policy making committee. Ang pinakamagandang gawin para magkaroon ng fairness at para di na outcast ang women at minorities is to have broad-based approach sa employee development, sa education and training. Isa pang group na nangangailangan ng consideration is that the dual career couples. Ang mga dual career couples ay yung dalawang magkarelasyon na parehong nagpo ng career. Isa sa mga madalas na mga approach na binibigay ng organization in dealing their needs is that first is the flexible working schedule. Another one is offering child care services. Minsan ang management have counseling couples sa career management. Meeting the challenges of effective career development. The first one is the assessment phase. Sa phase na ito, nakapaloob dito yung mga activities na ginagawa simula sa pag-a-assess ng employee on him or herself hanggang sa assessment na provided ng organization. Ang pinaka-goal or expected result nito is to identify the employee's strength and weaknesses. Sunod naman ay ang direction phase. Sa phase na ito, hinahanap kung anong klase ng career ang gusto ng mga empleyado. Karagdagan pa dito ay kung ano ba ang mga hakbang na gagawin nila para yung mga career goals nila ay ma-achieve nila. Kasama dito yung Individual Career Counseling and Information Services. Ang third is Development Phase. It is taking actions para makapag-create ng skills or madagdagan pa yung mga abilities and skills ng isang employee para mas maging prepared sila sa mga future job opportunities na dadating. Siyempre, Kapag nagkaroon sila ng mga panibagong kaalaman, they need to promote this development. There are three provided methods from the reference book and first is mentoring and coaching. Kailangan ng mga empleyado ang mga seniors nila para gabayan sila sa kanilang mga trabaho. If they aspire a higher management level sa organization, they need assistance from someone in higher position than them. 
Kaya nga tayo noong nagkaroon tayo ng work immersion ng senior high school, may mga nagga-guide sa atin sa mga tasks, ba? Diba? Para magkaroon tayo ng mas malalim na pag-intindi sa field natin. Next is job rotation. Ginagawa nila ito para magkaroon ng broad experience pa yung mga empleyado para hindi lang kung ano yung alam nila, yun na yun. Parang binibigyan sila lang chance para mag-explore pa sa mga ibang tasks. Next is Tuition Assistance Program. Ginagawa nila ito to help individuals plan their careers. Organizations try to provide additional information in order to have better choice of the career. And sabi pa sa ibang sources, kapag daw may ganitong assistance, mababawasan daw ang employee turnover. We have self-development. Kapag ang organization ay hindi madalas mag-offer ng mga development program sa company, syempre, nasa sarili na ng employee na i-develop at mag-create ng plan para sa kanilang improvement. Sa pagpaplano para sa trabaho mo, dapat iniisip mo din kung paano ka magko-contribute sa loob ng organization. Next, we have development suggestions. Ito is about personal growth and direction. Mission statement, gumawa ka ng mission mo. Tingnan mo kung ano yung mga purpose mo sa society. Create your personal mission na gagawin mo para maattain mo yung career vision mo. We have advancement suggestions. It focuses on the steps that employees can take to improve their chances of being considered for advancement. Remember that performance in your function is important, but interpersonal performance is critical. Ito yung pagfo-focus ng mga employees sa mga hakbangin nila para magkaroon sila ng chance para sa advancement. Career impacted life stage. People change constantly and thus view their careers differently at various stages of their lives. Some of the changes result from the aging process and others from opportunities from growth and status. First is we have growth stage. It is roughly from birth to age 14, period which an individual develops a self-concept. During this stage, an individual establishes his or her identity. Sa stage na ito, ang isang tao ay nagkakaroon na ng self-concept. Paano? Sa pamamagitan ng pakikipag-interact sa mga tao. Basically, dito sa stage na ito, nabubuo na ng isang tao ang kanyang pagkatao. Meaning, parang nag-start na niyang tignan kung ano talaga siya sa society and kung ano ang purpose niya kung bakit siya nandito. Next, we have exploration stage. It is roughly from age 15 to 24. Sa stage na ito, nag explore na ang isang tao. Ine-explore niya ang mga pwede niyang gawing trabaho. And yung isang individual, minamatch niya yung mga occupational alternatives na yun doon sa pansariling kagustuhan niya and syempre sa kanyang abilities resulting from his or her education, leisure activities, and works. Next, Establishment Stage. Roughly from age 25 to 44 and is the primary part of most people's work lives. Dito sa stage na ito, hopefully meron ng nahanap na trabaho ang isang individual or may permanent na itong career. Dito rin sa stage na ito, tinitignan ng isang tao or tinitest niya ang kanyang mga personal capabilities and mga ambition niya against doon sa mga occupational choices niya before. Maintenance Stage Between ages of 45 to 65 Dito sa stage na ito, meron nang puwang yung isang individual sa work world Sa age na 45 to 65, ito na yung time na madami ka ng accomplishments And those efforts na ina-exert mo sa working life mo is nagigain mo na Decline Stage As retirement becomes an inevitable reality in the decline stage, there is frequently a period of adjustment where many begin to accept reduced levels of power and responsibility. Hindi natin kayang pigilan ng pagtanda. Siyempre, sa pagtatrabaho, hindi tayo forever na nasa industry of career natin. Sa stage na ito, magkakaroon na ng adjustments. Dito na yung stage where we accept that nababawasan na ang power levels natin as well as the responsibility. Hope na may natutunan kayo sa discussion. Thank you for listening!